The Network Information Service, or NIS, utilizes daemons and a database to provide centralized authentication in a client-server architecture for Linux. This is similar to the way that Active Directory provides centralized authentication for Windows clients and a Microsoft network. Let's take this analogy a bit further. Active Directory makes it possible to create and manage user accounts, groups, and passwords in a single place on a domain controller. Many clients can then use this server so that user accounts, groups, passwords, and permissions apply to many computers on the network. This client-server architecture, where objects only have to be created and configured once, and they apply to every computer on the network, is infinitely more manageable than peer-to-peer -peer networks, where objects would have to be created on each computer individually. In the same way, NIST provides a means of centralized authentication on Linux networks. You only need to create, configure, and modify objects once on the NIST server. Those changes are then implemented on all of your NIST clients. You do not have to repeat them on each workstation as you would in a peer-to-peer -peer network. Historically, NIST was formerly known as the Sun Microsystems Yellow Pages. Hence, you will see YP prefixed to many daemons and config files belonging to this service. In addition to NIST, a newer implementation of NIST exists known as NIST Plus that allows for hierarchical domains as would exist in Active Directory. Securing NIST is very important. You must carefully control access to password and configuration files through host allow, host deny, and encryption. But that is another story. Today, we are only concerned with setting the service up and getting things configured and functioning. Let's get started setting up and configuring NIST. I'll be narrating the visual portion of these tutorials as we walk through things, but for the rest of the title clips, we'll use the text-to-speech engine Julie, as she has a much greater command of the English language than I do. Yay, Julie! We're setting up NIST today. And right now, I'm on an Ubuntu 10.10 uh, server, all right? Ubuntu comes in both a client and server image, each having a 32 and 64 bit version. All images are free downloads from Ubuntu's website, www.ubuntu.com. For the new server, Charles downloaded and installed the server version of Ubuntu. By default, it has no GUI like the client workstation versions. This is by design as servers don't need to waste memory on a graphical interface sound or multimedia. Rather, they need their memory and CPU cycles for daemons that provide DHCP, DNS, NIS, file and printer sharing, LDAP, WEMP, FTP, Samba NFS and CIFs. In other words, basic server services. However, to make commands entered into the terminal more legible, Charles has installed both X Windows and the GNOME desktop in the server version of Ubuntu a la carte. And this is two parts. We're going to do the, the server and the client. Now, this is a different ISO and it's a different image. Um, as a matter of fact, when you download the server ISO, there's not even a, you know, a graphical environment. There's no X windows or desktop by default. Everything's a la carte. And you don't need those to run the server services, but in this case, I've installed them to sort of give us a, you know, just a, a graphical output so you can see what I'm doing as I, I go through the required processes of setting things up and installing them. One. Install port map. Use sudo apt-get install port map. So the first thing I want to do is install port map. I'm going to do sudo and apt-get and install uh, port map. And let me authenticate, get my password there. And I have a few, uh, you know, database services, uh, MySQL and things installed. So I'm just saying no. You, you might not see the exact same screen that is showing up on mine. But, you know, as long as you install port map, you know, this is what you should see when you're done, then you're fine. So that's sort of step one. Two, update port map defaults. Use sudo update or cd port map defaults 10. All right, now the next thing we need to do is sort of update uh, the port map defaults. And so I'm going to do sudo and I'm going to do um, update uh, rc.d and Port map defaults 10. Okay, and then um, you can ignore the warning if you get one, but ba you know, basically you just want to do that before you install NIS. 3. Install NIS. Use sudo apt get install NIS. 
And now I'm going to install this sudo apt-get install network information services. And it'll query or ask you for you know the domain. And in this case, this is going to be like your NIST domain, and you could also couple that with DNS and make it your DNS domain and everything else. But um, I'll stick with the same theme I've been using. Um, so we'll do ultimatebattlestars.com. And now um, this will toil for a while. And the very first time you set it up, it will probably give you an error message. You know, it could give you a failure. Um, and the reason is you, ha you haven't added the necessary information into the configuration files yet. But to get the configuration files and to get everything set up to where you can start configuring this, um, you have to kind of go through this process. So, um, you know, we'll just let it toil. And then when it's done, we'll go through and we'll edit the configuration files and we'll need to restart the service and then we'll be done. And several minutes later, I'm back after impeding my son and daughter from engaging in Mortal Kombat. That is three warnings, one six-year-old, one eight-year-old, four door slams, one wine, a timeout, and a that's not fair later. Okay. And uh, again, notice it failed the first time, but don't panic. Um, like they say in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you just need to edit the configuration files. 4. Edit slash etc. Default NIS. Use pseudo NINA slash etc. Default NIS. So I want to go edit one of the main configuration files at this point. And I'm just going to do um, sudo nano etsy defaults, uh, excuse me, uh, default and NIS. And I need to change a few things here. And since this is the first in the server, as a matter of fact, it's the only NIST server on my little network here, I'm going to change it to a master. It's not a slave. It's it's a master and it's the only one. And it is not in this client. So I'm going to set this to be false. It's in this server. And um, yeah, that's really the only things we need to change in this configuration file. But there are others. Five. Edit etc. YP serve dot secure nets. Use sudo nano etc. yp serve dot secure nets. All right, so um, next I want to do um, I want to edit the next file. In this case, there's yp uh, serve dot secure nets. So I'm going to go into Etsy and yp serve secure nets. And this is sort of you know a super duper permissive. You notice the comment here, please adjust, give access to every. I mean, for debugging purposes, I guess you could leave it like this, but it wouldn't be very secure because remember with NIST, if you don't carefully control uh, who has access to your NIST servers, then they can potentially download your password list. And even if it's a hashed, you know, a hashed value or an encrypted value, uh, it doesn't matter. They, they can still use software to submit the hash value and, and you know, try to impersonate users or get into servers. So, it's not the most secure service that there is, at least if we leave it like this. So we're going to pull this out, and in this case, we're just going to set it up to be, um, I'm going to do 255, 255, 255, 255, 0, and I'm going to do 199207130. Just kind of get my, my little local network address here. And let's save it. Six. Edit slash pair slash yp slash make file. Use pseudo nano slash pair slash yp slash make file. And the next one I want to do is pseudo nano. And I'm going to do um the I, I need to edit the make file. And that's in ver yp. I have to change a few options here. Okay. And basically, I just want to add, you know, since by default, shadow passwords are implemented in Ubuntu, I need to add a line to that effect in this configuration file before I actually compile anything or call make on it. So I'm going to go here and I'm just going to add shadow. And yep, and yep. Okay. And now that I've saved that. Seven. Restart the port map daemon. Use sudo service port map restart. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and restart uh, port map. So pseudo service port map restart. All right, and that went fairly smoothly. Eight. Restart the new stay mode. Use pseudo service NIST restart. And now I need to do the same thing with NIST. Okay. And the services are stopping and starting. And again, this may take a while. And more than 60 seconds later. Alright. And this is restarted. And again, don't worry about the fill this time. But. 9. Invoke slash user slash lib slash yp slash yp in it dash m. Use sudo nano slash user slash lib slash yp slash yp in it dash m. I need to go in and do one more configuration here. And so I'm going to do sudo and user and lib and yp. And I want to do yp init dash m. Add a spacer. To, um, I need to configure. In this case, I only have one NIST, a master server. So. I put the host name in with you know this machine is Pegasus. I'm going to do Control D and Y. Bingo! And that'll set everything up. And now notice that Pegasus has been set up as a NIST master server. Okay. So we're almost done with the server, um, with the exception that I don't really have anything except a, you know, this is a fresh install of Ubuntu server, as opposed to you know Maverick Meerkat client. Or, so I don't really have many users configured or added to it yet. And you can tell if if I look at my passwords here. You know, in this case, I only really have the user account that I'm logging in as. 10. Add the users and groups to be used by NIST clients throughout the network to the NIST server. Use sudo user add dash d slash home slash username dash m username. So I'm just going to make some users real quick. And to do that, I'm going to do sudo user add um, the dash d option to make a directory first. And I'm just going to call this user1. And... I'll name the user user1. I'm going to do a user2. And I'm going to do a user3. Okay. And 3. Alright. And um, with this done, if I look at the home folder, notice that that creates a home folder with those user accounts. Or, you know, as I make the user accounts, it creates a home folder to go with them. And look at the permissions on those accounts. You know, as far as the group and the owner, each of those users you know, respectively owns and is the group of their directory, their home folder. Eleven. On your NIST server, give your new users passwords to log in and authenticate with NIST clients in your Linux network. Use sudo password username. Okay, so um, I just need to give them some passwords as well. And I'm just going to do a sudo and password and user1. And for the purpose of testing, we'll make it a short, easy to guess password. Wouldn't be hard to brute force that. P A S S. But, you know, our purpose is, is to set up this and not to create a um, hardened account. So, all right, so we ha have passwords for these user accounts. And I'm going to go back to my home folder and I'm just going to cat the password file. And Etsy. And if I cat the password file, right, notice that here are these user accounts. So they exist now um, along with C Germany. And in this case, my password here is password. Um, 12. Compile your new users, groups, and passwords into the NIST database. Use 1 cd slash fair slash yp slash 2 sudo make. And then when I, whenever I add users um, with a NIST server, the only thing is, when I'm done, I want to. I'm gonna have to, you know, I need to rebuild the database or update the database. So when I'm done modifying user information and things like that, I would just go into the uh, ver yp directory. Again, I'll print working directory, and I just want to run the utility make. Okay. Um, and actually, let me do that with root privileges. So I'll do sudo make. Okay, and that'll just update the database for exporting. And I'll go back to my home folder. Um, all right, and we're you know basically we're done with the server portion, so now it's time to move on to the client. Thirteen, you can test it. 
Use YPCAT password.